Hey there, welcome to my studio here in New York City. I'm Daniel Norton, and today we're going to talk about Curascuro. So this is a technique that's used in art from way back in the Renaissance painting was when it became really popular. And it has to do with using light and dark in high contrast situations. So we're going to use it not just to make contrast images, but to add kind of a three dimensional feel to our images. Photography obviously being flat <laughs> as paintings, right? Um, we want to kind of accentuate light as we can in our images to make them feel more three dimensional by using a combination of a bright highlight fading off into a shadow and then usually some kind of a separation behind. We can actually add some dimensionality to our images and we're going to do that really simply today. So there's lots of ways to use this technique, including just using natural light. But what we're going to use is a couple of strobes uh, to kind of give us the control that we want so I can really demonstrate. We're going to use two Profoto B10s. This one is going to be fitted into an extra, extra small Shimura box and this one into a Profoto 1x3 strip bank. The reason why I'm choosing small boxes is because we really want to control where the light falls so we can get those edges. We've talked about this a lot of times before. Soft boxes are great at kind of giving you edge control. So we want to really cut where the light falls so it falls exactly where we want it. I'm using Duvetine as my background. We've talked about Duvetine before. It's going to basically absorb the light, right? So that we're, even if the lights get real close to it, it's not going to be a problem. So with the two lights, we should be able to get a nice key light on her, give some good separation with our uh, kicker and create this chiaroscuro mood. Okay, so I'm here with Cadence. And we've got her close to the duvetine, because remember, duvetine basically, even if you hit it with light, it doesn't get like blown out. It's gonna stay very dark. Although we're gonna test that theory a little bit. I wanna get some light on the duvetine and try to brighten it up a little bit. But let's play around a little bit. First of all, we want to separate our subject. The thing with Kiroskiro is that the light is supposed to be kind of uneven, right? So we're not doing that flat beauty light that really lights up the face. We want some contrast, we want some, um, some texture, right? This is actually a, a nice light for, for more of a moody portrait, which is what we're doing here. Or if you're photographing, let's say, something that has a lot of texture, let's say an older person, you want to bring out the, the wrinkles or uh, you know, they've got grit like a, like a beard, you want to bring out that texture, this can work well for that. So since Kins is neither old nor does she have a beard, <laughs> We're just gonna go for more of a glowy. So I'm gonna overexpose her slightly, um, but let's start with the Shmira. This is again a Profoto B10 in an extra, extra small box, which is 12 by 16. I'm gonna move it in real close. Basically as close as I can without it being in my shot. We're gonna raise it slightly above eye level because we want to want to look good. And she's gonna favor that. If she looks straight ahead, she'll get that half lit face thing, which is fine. It's still, it just won't be the prettiness that we want. So we'll start there. I'm going to turn off my other light, which is the strip. I'm in TTL. Uh, we'll just take a test shot here. Good. We should get a nice shadow pattern on her face. Kind of wraps around the, uh, the little highlights on her dress kind of pop out. You know, it gives really nice texture. And this in and of itself is fine. I mean, if you want to have her fall off in the darkness, it doesn't look bad. She looks really pretty. The dress looks okay. This has got a certain mood to it, but we want to add some separation. That's really what we're doing here. We want this three dimensionality. First of all, though, I'm going to move my box out of the shot because... And I'm in TTL, so when I move the box back, um, it's, it's going to automatically adjust its exposure, but when you do move something further away, you typically want to rise a little bit, raise it a little bit. I know that was like an inch, but I still did raise it. <laughs> that keeps it kind of on the same plane. There we go. Now it's out of the shot. We've got this beautiful light coming across. Gorgeous. It's a smidge on the bright side, which is what I like, right? We want this to be contrasty. Now we're going to add our second light. This is a strip bank. Again, I'm using a strip bank for control. So first we're going to do where I'm going to really test the, the Duvetine hardcore because I'm going to hit the Duvetine and not cadence with this, kind of creating a grayish, hopefully behind her, grayish pattern behind her that's going to fade off. So it's going to feel very like matte uh, matte black, if you will. If we would use paper here or, or something like that, it would shine, right? We don't want a shiny black. We want like a matte black. That's why I'm using the Duvetine. So again, I'm just going to turn this light on. I'm leaving everything in TTL for now. Same kind of setup. Yeah. And we can see here that we're getting this like matte painterly kind of vibe. And we're even getting a little bit of kickback where she's getting a little bit of separation with her hair. We can see now we're starting to get this three dimensionality. It feels like kind of a painted canvas, which is the vibe we're going for. 
But if you're more traditional and you want to go with like more of a hair light, we can do the same thing. This would also be the same kind of idea because it's a kind of a traditional hair light is going to turn it so try to not get any on the background. So I'm basically feathering it past her hair. By the way, this position of the hair light would not be good if she was looking straight forward because it would hit her in the side of the face, but because she's looking to the side, it should be good. Yeah, and now we've got like a more traditional hair light and this does give that three dimensionality still, right? If we were lighting, let's say a group of people, uh, it, we could do this on each person and they would pop out and seem separate from each other, which could be really cool, cool uh, technique to do that. But I think ultimately combining all three are what we're gonna wanna do. So I like this, but I'm gonna let the hair light actually fall a little bit on the background. Let's see if we can get a compromise. So effectively I'm gonna light the background, but I'm gonna let the feather of the light hit her hair. It might be too bright uh, in the first shot and we'll have to kind of mess with it, but let's just see what TTL does for us. It's been, it's been good for us all day, so. All day meaning five shots so far. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So now we've got this beautiful kind of painterly grayish, dark gray charcoal behind her. We've got some separation in the hair and we have the nice light on her face. I actually want to take, I'm gonna mess with this a little bit more. I'm gonna move this light back even further to try to create a little more shadow on the camera side of her face. Again, I'm just moving it distance-wise, everything's staying in TTL. We're just finessing the light at this point. Uh, that might be a little too much, but that's kind of, that's got a different mood to it, right? Now we've got a bit of a, uh, a funkiness going on there. And actually some of that hair light caught you because I guess you moved slightly this way. Move, yeah, there we go. Let's try that. Yeah, there we go. So now we've got a little bit more moody light on here. So if you want mood, you could do that as well. Actually, I kind of think I like the first thing better. Of course, I always like the first thing I do better. <laughs> <laughs> I just stick to my original plan. I'm just gonna finesse its position to get it exactly where I want it, to get the light that I want. I'm raising it up slightly because that feels more natural to me. I'm also moving it in closer because I kind of like that. Even though I'm going to see it in the edge of my shot, I'm okay with that. In fact, I'll just move it a little bit. Good. There we go. That's more along the lines of what I'm looking for here. We've got this beautiful dark shadow here, right? It doesn't go completely to black. It just falls off into darkness. The hair is getting some light on it. The background's getting, the hair's maybe getting a little bit too much light. So again, I can just, it's all about tweaking at this point. I'm just gonna turn the light slightly this way. A grid could also help if you uh, couldn't turn the light, but it would give you maybe too tight of a light spread, so I don't wanna go there right now. There we go. Now we've got this fall off, right? We've got absolute dark to really bright to dark coming around back to kind of a medium and then kind of to a, like a, a, a darker. This creates our, our shape. Yeah, it's really nice. So let's just shoot a couple, I guess. We'll shoot a couple like this so we have more than like three frames. And we'll see what we have. This is a little bit of a, a refined shot. For instance, like if you look straight at me, it's probably not going to look ideal. Yeah, it's something. Like that would probably be fine in, in a Renaissance painting if you were being very, you know, dramatic. dramatic. But, you know, for <laughs> for a typical portrait, it wasn't made to look their best. We're going to have a work towards the light. If you like that. Easy as that, some different different expressions and we're done. Really, really easy guys, really simple using a, a technique that's been around for a long, long time, right? Shadow is what gives you the depth. I think when people first start shooting, they're always trying to get rid of every shadow. I've been asked so many times, how do I get rid of the shadow? Can I get a shadowless light? But the, the truly more beautiful light in my mind has some shadow to it, just controlled and placed where you want it to be. So if you haven't already, Go ahead, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. I'll put Cadence's information in the description so you guys can follow her. And I'll see you next time on set.